Quick question. I don't suppose anyone is interested in a small, cheap, practical electric car that has a big boot, charges itself, and has a bit of moss on the dash. Oh, everyone, everyone is interested in that. Oh, well, fantastic. Good news. This is the new production-ready Sono Scion. It's cheap, it's simple, it charges itself off the sun, and it's got lovely green fluffy stuff as standard. This car embodies everything that is currently missing in the EV world. It embodies everything that we and you have been crying out for, and it's finally here. It's real. We know when production is going to start. We know how much it costs. We know pretty much everything about it at this point. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it. This is the Sono Scion, and this is the Fully Charged Show. Fully Charged Live is coming to California this September 10th and 11th, powered by Electrify America. Get your tickets to the number one EV and home energy show now. So, Sono Scion. Now, normally when I do a video like this about a new company, I start by giving you a bit of backstory on the company, how it started, what their cool values are. But to be honest with you, we kind of already did that when we visited them last year and drove a prototype. So, if you want the full long story, pause this, go watch that, but for now, Here's the really short version. Sono Motors is a Munich-based company born from a scruffy prototype that two teenagers literally built by hand in a shed back in 2015. A prototype which, if we're being really honest, does suspiciously resemble a Renault Twingo with some batteries pushed up its bum and the headlights from an old Mercedes A-Class, but you've got to start somewhere. And since that first prototype, there have been many rounds of revisions and tweaks and changes, but throughout, the core design has remained fundamentally the same. And that is a smallish electric family car covered in as many solar panels as possible, enabling you to do as much driving as possible on free, clean sun juice. A boxy body to maximize cabin space and boot space and create nice big flat surfaces for said solar panels. A super simple, no frills interior that prioritizes affordability and practicality over posh materials and fancy features. And an overall design that really lends itself to car sharing and energy sharing. And here, just 10 years after they banged out that first shonky prototype is the final production ready version of the Sono Scion. So, what have we got? Well, seemingly not too much has changed from that prototype that I drove last year, at least on the outside, and that is fine with me. For production, the Scion has actually got a little bit bigger. It's roughly the same width and 20 centimeters longer than a VW ID3 now, so by no means a tiny, tiny city car. It's also been treated to new headlights, new door handles, and somehow an even boxier design than before with even fewer lines and creases. It's not a looker, it's not gonna win any design competitions, but it is still better looking than most new BMWs. And more to the point, it's functional because that boxy exterior enables Sono to cover the Scion with more solar panels than Robert Llewellyn's gaff. Specifically, 456 monocrystalline silicon half cells, and yes, I do know what that means, thank you very much. Cells which I'm told are designed in a very clever way, which enables them to draw power from the sun, even in cloudy conditions. In fact, in an average week of average German weather, and remember, Germany is often das drizzly, the Sono can amass 70 miles of range from its solar panels. If you live somewhere really hot, that number can get as high as 152 miles of range per week. Worth noting, by the way, that those solar panels are coated in a robust layer of polymer, so they're not super, super fragile. You're not going to shatter the entire back of your car, reversing into a bollard in a car park. Anyone in here ever reversed into a bollard in a car park before? No? <clears throat> Now, those solar range figures obviously don't hold a candle to the 300 plus miles of solar energy that the light year zero can amass from its solar panels in a hot week. But it's still more than enough to cover most people's weekly mileage, or at the very least, take a big old chunk out of it, significantly reducing how many times you're gonna have to charge this car. And more to the point, while the light year zero is a quarter million dollar limited series production ultra-efficient halo car, the Sono Scion is just a regular old car with an astonishingly regular price. Are you ready for this? Sono estimates that the entry price of the Scion in Europe is going to be 25,126 euros. 
And that is cheaper than a Nissan Leaf, it's cheaper than a Renault Zoe, it's cheaper than an ID3, a Mini Electric, it's cheaper than almost every single electric car on sale today, save for uh, the little smart cars and an entry-level Fiat 500, both of which have very, very small range. The Sono doesn't. Its 54 kilowatt hour battery is good for around 190 miles of WLTP range. So just to recap, one of the cheapest electric cars on sale, proper useful range, absolutely covered in solar panels. Nice. Now, just staying on specs for a moment, here's a few other numbers that you may be interested in. The Sono can charge at up to 75 kilowatts, which admittedly is not especially fast compared to some other modern EVs, but given how small the battery is, it's still gonna charge pretty quickly, and hopefully you won't be charging it too much anyway, because solar. 11 kilowatt. Kilowatt. The much more impressive number is 11 kilowatt charging in the opposite direction. The Sono Scion comes with bi-directional charging as standard, meaning you can use it to power your house or charge another electric car. And we'll come back to this a little bit later because this really plays into what I deem the Sono Scion's party piece. Power, meanwhile, is sent to the front wheels only via a single 120 kilowatt motor, which is good for a eye melting nine second naught to 60 time and a top speed of 87 miles per hour which kidding aside is plenty for a car like this efficiency meanwhile which is quite important on a solar car has been quoted to me as 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers or if you prefer 6.25 kilometers per kilowatt hour which is actually pretty good for a car that looks like it should have the aerodynamic properties of a shoebox. It's probably up the top end of what modern road-going EVs get at the moment. But of course, the big thing that that boxy shape gives you is huge amounts of cabin space. I can tell you from personal experience that the Sono Scion passes the jack test with flying colors. I was able to fit myself into the front and back seats, all six foot five of me, with absolutely no problems whatsoever. You get a nice flat floor in the back seats as well, which means the middle seat is properly usable for an actual human adult. Likewise, the boot, which is perfectly square and has absolutely no lip whatsoever, is good for 650 litres of cargo space. That goes up to 1,250 with the rear seats down. A huge amount of room. The cabin of the Sono Scion, meanwhile, remains brutally simple. And remember, I say this having sat in it myself. When they say simple, they do mean simple. A few things have changed since the prototype I drove. The Scion now has a new steering wheel, new seats. Shh. A few extra storage cubbies, but it is ever so simple. You're gonna be seeing scratchy, cheap plastic materials galore, and that's fine. It's a solar car that's cheaper than almost every other electric car on the road. You can't have everything. The driving experience, meanwhile, will also emphasize simplicity. There's a little screen in front of you, a 10 inch touchscreen in the middle to serve the infotainment, which does come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard, two pedals and a steering wheel. And that's about it. There is almost no customization as far as the driving experience. Regen is set to maximum all the time, that's just how it comes. And likewise, there's almost nothing you can fiddle with as far as the spec sheet. The car sort of just comes how it comes. You can choose from a few different interior colors, you can add a tow bar, but that's about it. And that is one of several ways that Sono has managed to keep that price point so incredibly low. It's simpler and cheaper to manufacture a car if everyone on the production line is fundamentally the same. And just quickly, we have to acknowledge that strip of moss in the dash. I love it so much. I'm so glad it's made production. The CEO, Lauren, was quite careful not to explicitly say that it has any actual air purifying properties when I spoke to him last year, but I don't care. It looks beautiful. If I had a Sono Siren, I think I'd push a couple of newts in there and use it as an aquarium. Animal cruelty? Maybe. Adorable? Definitely. Production of the Sono Scion will commence in the second half of 2023, and interestingly, it's been outsourced to a manufacturer called Valmet Automotive. A couple fun facts about Valmet Automotive. Number one, as a business, they are entirely carbon neutral. Number two, it's the same company that's been assigned to the manufacture of the Lightyear Zero. So they're in good company. And finally, just a quick word on the Sono Scion's party piece, in my opinion, which is the whole car sharing, energy sharing malarkey. Every Sono Scion will come preloaded with some app functionality that allows you as an owner to do some really, really cool stuff. For one, you can rent your car out when you're not using it, setting your own prices. 
meaning your car can actually make you money while you're out of town. You don't have to hand over your key, everything is done through the app. But on top of that, you can sell power. Let's say you have a week where you know you're not going to be driving very much, but your car is sat outside full of clean, free sun energy. Well, you can go into the app and say, I feel like giving away 20 kilowatt hours this week. Someone else can then come park next to you, plug their car into yours and buy that power from you. Again, the car is making you money. And the best part is by the end of the week, your car will be full of sun juice again. It's just makes so much sense. I am a huge fan of this car, in case you can't tell. I am really impressed by the company and I am staggered by the price point that they've been able to achieve. This is a company that's never made a car before, producing a sub £25,000 solar-powered electric car before the likes of VW or Ford or any of the legacy car makers have managed to get anywhere near that price point. It's little wonder that the Sonoscion already has a 19,000 strong waiting list, but don't panic. They're planning on building over a quarter of a million of them over the next seven years. And just before we finish, it's worth acknowledging that the production-ready Scion wasn't the only thing that Sono unveiled this week. They also launched an EV solar retrofit kit for buses. Now this kit is designed for the most common type of 12 meter long bus used all across Europe and it doesn't turn the bus into a full-blown electric vehicle. But it does install 8 square meters of solar onto the roof which will impart power certain subsystems of the bus like the HVAC for example. Sono reckons this will enable the bus to save some 1500 litres of diesel every year, meaning that the kit pays for itself in three to four years, by the way, on top of saving four tonnes of CO2 a year. I guess Sono's thinking here is, shouldn't every vehicle and building just have a load of solar panels on top of them, reducing their fuel usage? And the answer is yes, absolutely. So there you have it, the new Sono Scion, a very exciting new electric car which makes a lot of existing electric family cars look a little bit over expensive and a little bit impractical. Let us know in the comments, what do you make of the Sono Scion? I'd have one in a heartbeat, would you? Please make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have been, thank you for watching.